The second Monday of October has been a national holiday longer than I've been alive. In school, we all knew it as Columbus Day. Now, why we celebrated a man history recorded as a fraud who did not discover America, enslaved people, tortured, and killed natives and his own crew, <clears throat> that will take more explanation than I have today. But thankfully, we do not have to celebrate Columbus anymore because President Biden signed a declaration last year officially recognizing the second Monday of October as Indigenous Peoples Day. Now, I bet you think you know the history of the First Nations, but one of the saddest parts of Native American history isn't even taught in our schools. Shocker, right? I am talking about the dark secret of Native American boarding schools. It's the little-known but widely practiced policy in the U.S. going back to the late 19th century that forcibly took Native children from their families to be sent to schools founded for the sole purpose of forced assimilation. Yes, you heard that right. The policy motto, as described by the school's founder, was, quote, kill the Indian in him, save the man, end quote. Government investigations and testimonies show, once there, the children were tortured for speaking their language or practicing their religion. We know many were raped, beaten, starved, and even murdered. And if, if the children returned to their homes, they were often too traumatized to speak of it. The Bureau of Indian Education took over the schools in 1969. Most of them closed in the 1980s, but 15 remain open. The truth is, folks, there is still so much we do not know about the schools, but that's changing thanks to several investigations now underway. And America's first Native American cabinet member, Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland. In 2021, Secretary Holland launched the first government-sponsored probe into the tragic practice. The National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition is working alongside the investigations. Here is a look at how they honored Secretary Holland's announcement. I'm announcing and sharing with you all, first, that the department will launch the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative. At no time in history have the records or documentation of this policy been compiled or analyzed to determine the full scope of its reaches and effects. We must uncover the truth about the loss of human life and the lasting consequences of these schools. This investigation will identify past boarding school facilities and sites, the location of known and possible burial sites located at or near school facilities, and the identities and tribal affiliations of children who were taken there. I know that this process will be long and difficult. I know that this process will be painful. It won't undo the heartbreak and loss that so many of us feel. But only by acknowledging the past can we work toward a future that we're all proud to embrace. Kenrit Escalante joins me now. He is the creative director of the National Native American Boarding Schools Healing Coalition. Kenrit, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. As we were researching this, I was just, uh, it, it, this really just punched me in my gut. Now, you say that it is time for America's reckoning on this. And I think a lot of people may have watched Canada start its healing process after finding mass graves of indigenous children on residential school grounds. But the blueprint for those schools was started right here in the United States. The Department of the Interior found that the United States had three times the number of schools that Canada did, at least 367, some going all the way back to the 1880s. At one point, 82 percent of all Native American children were forcibly living in these schools. And we don't even know how many indigenous children died. Why do people not know this, including members of the Native community? Why, why were we not taught this history? It was by design. Um, you know, the U.S. federal Indian boarding school policies and the ongoing erasure of indigenous people history, uh, it's just been a part of the American blueprint since first contact. Uh, you know, as stated, as the Department of the Interior, they even said that the federal Indian boarding school policies were meant to displace, assimilate, and disrupt American Indians and Alaska Natives and Native Hawaiians, specifically in the pursuit of inquiring collective territories. This was a land grab. And how do you make theft genocide and assimilation easier to swallow. And let me repeat that, genocide, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's what it was. It was genocide. How do you make that easier to swallow? Make it charitable. 
by saying we're going to kill the Indian to save the man, that we're going to bring churches in, save the, the merciless Indian savage. And that's why most Americans don't know about this, because what little we were taught, we were taught that these institutions were good for Native Americans and Alaska Natives and Native Hawaiians, and that this was our pursuit in becoming better Americans. Mm. You know, uh, Kimrick, we heard Secretary Holland talking about the Department of Interior's investigation. Folks don't know, though, that there's also a House bill, H.R. 5444, and it has been introduced to establish the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding Schools. The House Natural Resources Subcommittee invited boarding school survivors to actually come and testify about their experiences. Yes. I want to make sure um, I play this for folks right now, but I do want to warn people in the audience that some viewers may find what they're about to hear disturbing. Here it is. I've been waiting. 67 years to tell the story. In 1955, uh, I went to Wrangell Institute for the first of uh, six years that I was there and witnessed so many uh, atrocities that almost became uh, normal or normalized. During my stay at the school, corporal punishment was common. In one place, sometimes they used the cattle prod on us. Another way the police disciplined us was to lock us out of the school during the cold winter. When this would happen, the little guys would be shivering and crying. I remember being afraid to sleep at night, fearful of the matron's son who walked the halls at night using a flashlight to spot me in bed. He touched me like no child should ever be touched. As a little girl, those hands were huge. Boys and girls were both equally uh, sexually, physically, psychologically, and spiritually abused. And I have many, many witnesses to those atrocities. Kimrick, what is... What is next here? This is this is very clearly intergenerational trauma, and I'm sure that was very hard for people to hear. But it is, it is an, it is important that we hear these stories. What is next? What do you hope comes of these investigations? First of all, I was there, and it's still hard to to hear those uh, those testimonies. Um, but you're you're right. We we are in a time of healing. Uh, we're in a time of truth and justice. And you know what we need to let. Uh, not only the general public, but we also need to remind Indian country that these traumas are real and we still live with them today. There's reasons why we feel displaced. There's reasons why we feel that we can't connect to our nations and our people because the loss of our language, our, our culture, and you know the, the belonging with family and having the empathy of having love within your own home and that feeling that it was our fault. This was not our fault. This is not your fault. This was a plan. This was a pursuit, not only to take our land, but to displace us and to rip us from our culture and our people so that we had nothing more but to be just American. So what do we need to do now, right now? We need to pass H.R. 54. We need to pass Senate Bill 2907, the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies Act. The time is now. We can't look back. We need to move forward. And the only way to do that is by you, everybody else. We need journalists. Mm -hmm. We need people in the media. Mm -hmm. We need, you know, your aunties and uncles, everyone who can pick up a phone and call your congressional leader. The time is now. We need to pass these. The time is now. Kimrick Escalante, thank you. Just thank you very much for shining a light on this, for your commitment to the work and for holding us all accountable. I appreciate you. Well, good. Thank you.